thank you very much for joining, Sylvia. I'm very excited to share this time, the, the live, uh, with you. As um, I remember, I was uh, so much impressed as we had a session uh, masterclass offered by you a few months ago and I still have my notes from that session that um, it impressed me very much so I thought uh, we really have to share some of those knowledges and uh, wisdoms and experiences of you and a little bit of mine also with our mm -hmm. um, amazing friends and colleagues so a heartfelt welcome I would love you to introduce yourself a little bit also because there would be people from my network from your network so um, we would love to yes. know also a little bit about you mm -hmm. thank you Vin, for those kind kind words yes that was the first time when we met it was a workshop on sales psychology of selling and um, I remember your question so thank you for inviting me in your show and and big hi to everyone who's who's watching this uh, from your Facebook profile. So uh, for the people who doesn't know me, I'm a mindset and a business strategist, international speaker and connector as well. I help people to overcome fears in the businesses and I help their ideas to stay alive. You know, when someone has idea and doesn't know where to start, how to start from marketing, branding, networking, this is where I jumped in. I hold them accountable and motivate them when uh, when the days are not so pink as they maybe oh, yeah. expect them to be. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't have those days? <laughs> yes, we, we all have great days, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm very happy that you're here. And uh, just for information of our friends, uh, Sylvia is based in Germany, in Munich. And uh, so, I mean, it's not so far away to also reach her. But as far as I'm concerned, you deal with uh, international clients or partners. So mm -hmm. as we both are actually working, let's say our focus is local, but our work is, uh, our service is global. So whomever yes. needs our help or cross our way, as far as we also are able to offer our assistance and support, um, we are also more than happy to to do so. Uh, and for those uh, who just joined us, um, you know me actually. And for those who are also joining us from other uh, network uh, areas, that uh, because I put it on public. So uh, my name is Ewan, also with based in Zurich, Switzerland. I help uh, small business owners and solopreneurs uh, safeguard their legal positions so that. Once they are starting uh, dealing with uh, clients or partners or throughout their daily businesses, they must have their legal papers in place. It's just like the function of uh, insurance for the day, for the gray days, as you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, there are three gray days in every area. And in case they have gray days with their clients or uh, partners or supporters, um, that they are not like in a way in the air. So they have something that they can really refer to to protect themselves, their assets, their families, etc. What we would like to share with you today is something that we have been um, facing ourselves throughout the past month, or let's say throughout the course of 2018, just with the focus on the different niches that we uh, deal with, uh, Sylvia and also myself, well, we notice that uh, sometimes, or most of the business, let's say always, every business faces changes and transformations, just like our person, because you mentioned also very nicely that there's also one personal side of that. So these are actually complementary. Personality and business, they go hand in hand. Uh, and then we wanted to share with you, because a lot of people, they also approach us, or maybe ourselves, once we face a change, or once we feel that we are falling into a hole or something, uh, then we think, oh, the business is over, or uh, <laughs> more good and nice to us, and the great days, you know, they come up, and... Um, we had a very good discussion that now we thought uh, we put it on Facebook Live and then uh, we share it also with you. And of course, we're also happen, happy and open 
to receive your comments and questions. And as far as the time permits, we will just respond uh, during the Facebook Live session. And otherwise, we will get back to you in the comments or you can, of course, reach out to us offline. So, Sylvia, I know you yes. as a... I remember in your sales session, you were mentioning this um, animal's attitude towards the um, uh, sales habits. Like, how mm -hmm. is it to avoid being a sheep and being a lion or, mm -hmm. or the wolf? I think it was lion. <laughs> yeah, it was a dolphin, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> dolphin and, and hyenas. The sheep, dol dolphins and hyenas, yeah. Ah, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Now mm -hmm. I think, okay, it's been a few months, so I think now <laughs> something lighting up. I would love you, for example, just uh, to, to mention a few things about those and how is it that we also go through those changes because these are also changes of habits and attitude mm -hmm. that they directly or indirectly uh, influence our business or our personal behaviors so that then at the end of the day ultimately we will face changes or mm -hmm. transformation in our I mean transformation would be the positive result but we will see changes how would it to handle those kind of behaviors and also um, changes not to give up but see it as a sign to grow or to transform and to continue so let's say how mm -hmm. would you suggest to get rid of those gray days <laughs> thank you I mean uh, that that's a great question I must say immediately I would not love that anyone gets rid of great days I mean, I uh, because, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, because that is actually, um, if we talk about from a mindset perspective, what is happening our, in our mind, our mind doesn't like change. Our mind is like, no, we want everything to stay the same because that's a comfort zone. And this is just how our brain and the way we think, how it, how it operates. So it's nothing that we need to feel guilty about or when we feel uncomfortable. But the good thing in change is when we start embracing the change, no matter how painful that change is, then the change becomes more pleasant. And we see, we see good things then in change. So, of course, when someone has a massive change, you know, a change in career, or maybe someone just lost a job, or maybe some contract didn't went through, and, and those changes, that, changes uh, that are happening have consequences, of course, that is challenging. And we all, and like we spoke of in, uh, we all have this uh, uh, feeling, oh, should I stop doing this? You know, yeah. is this a sign of the universe? To me, a familiar uh, position. Yes. Like, oh, now this contract didn't went through and that client said no. And, and someone says maybe something bad to us. Oh, look at all the signs. I would say, you know, the signs are always there where our focus is. Wow. If we are searching for the signs subconsciously, to stop something that we maybe started not fully from our heart, of course, that we will see every, every change, every no, every obstacle as a sign. Okay, this is it. This is a sign from the universe, from a God. I should stop, stop doing that. But if we are aware of, and this is what I would love, you know, uh, whoever is watching this and maybe, maybe f uh, going through some change, that pay attention on one quote, that says, every mountain has a valley. Every yeah. mountain has a valley. Why there are sometimes so many valleys? <laughs> <laughs> because someone who has a greater plan for us uh, wants us to really become our full potential. Okay. And this is because we, we cannot grow as a, a business owners. We cannot grow spiritually. We cannot grow emotionally. We cannot grow on any level. So deep, we cannot grow on any level if we don't put ourselves in uncomfortable zones. Mm -hmm. So that means we can literally sit all day in a pleasant, you know, in our home and eat some chocolate maybe. And we could think, oh, I want this change to happen in my life. I want to grow. But the change will not happen. The change will not happen on, 
the change really happens through struggle, through new situations. So that's why uh, first step, mental step, so to say, when we feel that uh, everything is falling apart, just to accept it and said, yes, everything is falling apart. It is falling apart. Not to avoid, not to try to sugarcoat, not to, not to run away from that. So first is, okay, face it. Because the only way how we can go through change, it's like from one, uh, one story uh, uh, from children, it's, uh, it's called, we're going on a bear hunt. You know, there was a family going through on a bear hunt and they were <laughs> like... Okay. Yeah, so they, they try to skip every possible way over it and under it and, you know, next to it through this forest. But the only way how they could get actually to face their fear of bear is go directly through it. And maybe look it in the eyes. Yes, look it in the eyes. Because when we really face something and we say, okay, I'm still alive, whatever comes, I'm ready to face that. Wow. So that will be a first step. That is, uh, it sounds simple, but many people maybe who are uh, in a comfort situation now think, oh yeah, that's easy. But remember this when the change is really happening. Okay, embrace it. Embrace that change. Say, yes, it's happening. The second thing, I mean, that I would say is in change, we <clears throat> even... Even two of us and whoever is watching this, I just want to say I'm, I am human as anyone else. And that's the success, why I, we share yes. it also. We experience ourselves so that to say it is not that you or me, we are just telling people what to do and ourselves are um, lying on our soft pillows with the hot chocolate and say, oh, good. <laughs> it's only for you, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Because we have the same, I mean, we have or we are having always the same experience. So that was also like major things throughout the year. So, um, yeah, just please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Avin. And the second, the um, there is change. When the change is not pleasant, most of the people, most of us have this tendency, you know what, I did something wrong. We start to blame ourselves. We start to judge ourselves. We start to question, oh, what did I do wrong? Look what is happening. So we are starting to sabotaging ourselves, even in this uh, hard enough situation. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest and what really helped me after we embrace the pain, embrace that change, that we are brave enough to be vulnerable and to ask for help. Yeah. And sometimes asking for help literally means picking up the phone and saying simply and directly to a friend, you know what? I'm having extremely difficult time. I don't know what to do. It seems that everything is falling apart. Yeah. This actually one time also my mentor told me that he said that has happened to himself also as he was as a talented, super smart and so-called young, uh, successful pioneer in his business he suddenly fell and then everything was great out of the sudden but then he was thinking he felt like shy to to ask or to call those people who have known mm -hmm. him that young successful guy suddenly call them and admit hey i failed and how can you help me mm -hmm. and then he said it was a big obstacle for him just to jump over and pick up the phone and call some of his best friends and say, for example, Johnny or Patrick or X, I'm broke and I'm in a deep shit. Sorry. How can you mm -hmm. help? Mm -hmm. And then seemingly it worked out with two of them afterwards. He could even partner and he rebuilt his business. And then together they became like over mega successful. That uh, Yes. Yes. And, and that leads me to, that leads me to, uh, exactly to the third point what I'm trying what I want to say here you know God I'm a believer and uh, I truly believe that there is someone who knows uh, what our heart literally what our heart uh, desires even before we know that mm -hmm. and he created this really beautiful uh, uh, thing with us people you know no one can no one can become successful alone no one 
So even yeah, when the change... Yes, so even when the change is happening and when we are picking up the phone, that is part of our success because the other person will maybe just say one word or one sentence or it will look at us and we will feel, you know what, I'm not rejected. I'm not, she's not blaming me. She still believes in me. So I think that connecting those three steps, so to say, those three levers and awareness that as long as we are alive, there is for every problem, there is a solution. For every problem, there is always solution. But we need to take responsibility that in that painful change that is happening, that we believe not just in God, that we believe in other people, yeah. that there are other people who will help us, who will maybe not have financial, if someone is in financial struggle, maybe a, a friend of that person will not have money to give, you know, so that the person can kind of reinvest in a business. But maybe that friend will say one sentence that will bring the person in trouble to a new idea that was here. You know, that was literally in front of the nose. Yeah. So um, to open the eyes and to believe that there is a greater plan through people that is meant for us, no matter how low in the valley we are. I think somehow, let's say, the um, tools are uh, also important for us. Maybe that's that friend or that um, friend of a friend who are suddenly becoming the tool for us to open the eye and see that. <laughs> yes. Which was here or here. So just to... Uh, support us or to push us through that uh, breakthrough, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, um, well, if I may ask you, if you can just m move a little to this. To uh, this? Have, yeah, yeah. Because I okay, have your good. whole pretty face. That's a pity. Thank that's you. One part, as you were doing this, then I saw that one uh -huh. part is not totally visible. So now it's perfect. Um, how you explain it to people that you're working with? Because as far as I'm concerned, you work with people. First, I say hi to uh, Rocky, to Mia, to gorgeous Selena. If it's a, a cool guy is writing us boom, boom, boom. So I think, you know, <laughs> what we are planning. And um, Angela, hi, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time. So thank you um, for joining Yes. Uh, how do you um, explain it to your clients um, when they are into business? So to see also that personal part so intensely and, and to, to believe that also that what you are saying, it's not just just some stereotypes or scripts that you just learn mm -hmm. by heart, but true so that they execute on that. Because mm -hmm. nice words are everywhere, but good deeds and also execution on that what we hear or that what we also learn, uh, it needs also a massive um, fearlessness. Yes. Uh, so I sometimes call it the courage because I want to stress the absence of the fear. Um, mm -hmm. How would you convey this message to them so that they also go through a kind of uh, smoother breakthrough sometimes it goes pretty harsh and revolutionary as we are both mm -hmm. so familiar with with super colorful backgrounds and different origins etc so we know also some tough challenges but mm -hmm. not for everybody it is so simple just to bridge the gap how would mm -hmm. you really uh, explain it to them or put it into your trainings or coachings that mm -hmm. uh, they really let it go hand in hand with the business development that you help them with? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question, Avin. I think that the power of having a good mentor who failed so many times is extremely important. Of course, uh, we are both in a coaching and consulting industry. There's so many coaches who, you know, they're just doing their job and they're trying to be coach as well. But if someone... Uh, is now watching this and it's a business owner I always say search for a mentor who failed so many times search for a mentor who is vulnerable enough to say hey I was broke hey I did a mistake hey I didn't do this good I didn't do that good and when I work with my clients I do share my personal stories I do say hey you know what I earned 70,000 in in a six months 
And then I mentally could not, you know, could not accept it. So I sabotage myself. And I'm not mm-hmm. afraid to share that because this is where my size is. This is where my leadership is. And this is where, um, uh, where I show my clients that whatever they are facing, I know exactly how they feel, not because I read it or, you know, did the seminar, because I experience it. And it's an interesting story that I read a few years ago that in Japan, uh, big companies, you know, when they're uh, um, deciding who they will employ on a manager position, they choose the people who are exactly that, vulnerable enough to write down. And then I went, you know, like bankruptcy, this part, of, this, uh, this period of life, and then a new position, and then bankruptcy, and a new position, new position. Why? Because they know and they're aware of that the person who experienced deep pain, deep change, and deep loss, and after that raise again, that that is exactly the manager, the leader, director, whoever it is, who's going to be able to take the company out of any crisis. Wow. Absolutely. And also to motivate and lead the others. Yes. To yes. Pull them uh, up also with himself and not only like playing the role of uh, a manager or a boss, but also, as you said, uh, a responsible leader. This is something mm-hmm. that was also concerning myself. A very good point. Thank you also for mentioning that. I see one of my um, gorgeous friends here. She also mentioned that she's been through a crisis as well. I just mm-hmm. passed across days ago for my new projects but we managed mm-hmm. it with a great team working and proper mm-hmm. crisis yeah so uh, i think yes. we'll be happy Tanya can can just share and say what kind of management tactic or what kind of solutions um they they also used for that so that's uh, we also learned from her and also mm-hmm. other people uh, for myself the, the points that you mentioned with this japanese um way of also hiring high managers or executives etc because the higher the position the more the heavier also the responsibility because many people think it's just the income which rises but it's also the responsibility that's also what i heard also in japan when they somehow uh, sabotage themselves or they cannot tackle a certain um mission then the suicide rate is pretty high because they have yes. a very popular culture so they are not able to um, admit it or they just don't want to uh, face that they failed. And then in a way of like apologizing or excusing themselves, then they choose the way of suicide, which is, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure it is not like in every corner there, but it happens in comparison to some other regions and countries um, a little a uh, lot more mm-hmm. with something mm-hmm. that uh, people should really look at it diligently for myself I was also a little uh, thinking too much that oh because my very first business I wouldn't say it failed but I lost a lot of money and a lot of mm-hmm. energy and a lot of investment that I did because I built it up based on a certain circumstances between two contradictory mm-hmm. te- um, uh, uh, related areas so the risk was pretty high it is not that I say I was not aware of it so but I never knew when is that going to happen and how shall I equip myself or prepare myself that was also my first experience I had no coach and I just started from scratch and actually it went also very well for a certain period of time but then I lost a lot so mm-hmm. based on some political changes and, and the situation between the, the countries and also the world. Um, but at the beginning, I was in a way reluctant to talk about it or to say to someone because I thought, wow, everybody thought I was making hell of money with them mm-hmm. and super successful. And then my mentor told me, no, you have to share it with people. Sorry, because how can you then help somebody from... Uh, some great days in business or in some, let's say, um, tough situations, how can you then tell them that you know how it feels? Because mm-hmm. now you know mm-hmm. how it feels. So it's a yes. great experience. Tell them. That's no problem. Yes. It needs strength. It needs a bit more um, 
like as you said uh, jumping over that valley or just going through it and face mm -hmm. it and talk mm -hmm. about it so this mm -hmm. is something very valuable that i learned that vulnerability is actually strength it is yes not. yes And facing the change is also something that we have to be prepared for, not only in entrepreneurial lives, but also in when we are employed or where we are just even not working in, in personal aspects. We have mm -hmm. to be really ready for that and welcome it and face it. Because yes. afterwards, probably much, much better um, things are going to happen or maybe not, or maybe takes time, but it, we have to accept it as part of life. For me, myself, during these past years, or, or let's say past months, especially, as I was rather focusing on my second business, mm -hmm. help people um, manage a tr smooth transition um, and respons responsibly from corporate life to, to uh, become business owners and independent, financially independent. Of course, I had to face a lot of other challenges throughout the course of launching or uh, setting up their businesses with my uh, background also from legal and financial sector i really saw because before i was a lot into dispute settlement and alternative uh, dispute resolution methods especially mm -hmm. we focus on corporate disputes uh, mm -hmm. and not only corporate in sense of like only in corporate life but also businesses business owners and companies who work Uh, coming into a certain um, conflicts and disputes mm -hmm. and they were the most reputable of them or the most renowned of those companies they were avoiding court proceedings or suing each other or you know playing this winner and loser game they were seeking solutions they were mm -hmm. seeking negotiation and um, respectful uh, continuous continuing of the relationship or respectfully dissolving the partnership, business partnership. So for, for a while, I left that focus, actually, because my focus was rather on helping people build up their own businesses and become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I realized how many of them are just lacking this uh, experience or this knowledge, also in their personal life and in their business, that they were not... Uh, having like small in amount of investments or maybe just not noticing that they are a uh, very much in need of also legal uh, backup and safeguards. Mm -hmm. They are lacking in, let's say, lacking contracts, uh, solid uh, papers, um, legal correspondences, and they do not draft or write down what they agree Uh, orally with their clients, with their employees, with their partners, etc. They do not write it down as also myself for quite a while, even as lawyer, but you know, you're, you're, you have a good yes. heart and you think everybody will stick to their commitment and nobody will cheat or something. But these things are a part of life and this happens. So for me, it was like a push uh, towards reallocating my focus, uh, at least for the next uh, couple of months or something until I also fulfilled this mission because I realized that the market or my clients or my potential clients mm -hmm. they need in this area at the moment much more. So just to help them for those who are building up businesses or who are owning already a business but they don't know this kind of things. They are negotiating a partnership with someone, they are negotiating an employment with someone, um, or they are negotiating um, to offer their services to certain clients, but they put nothing on paper, or they just copy-paste some, I don't know, standard templates from internet, and without giving it to someone, at least for a review or a professional edit, let's say, okay, look, I invest like a few hours, or a few, I don't know, hundreds of dollars or whatever in this, but then I have something solid on my hand, and I can sleep peacefully at night. So this was now yes. part of my change with which I faced in my um, past few months, which pushed me towards offering this as additional part of my services to a lot of, especially mm -hmm. small business owners, because the bigger ones mm -hmm. they have their lawyers, etc. But the small ones, 
they are too much concerned about the costs or, you know, they say at the moment, now we have to put our focus on this. <laughs> and then yes. something happens, you know, I, I'm sure you also have been dealing with uh, clients or partners who were mm -hmm. going through kind of issues. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I've been what you're saying and explaining, and I'm so glad that you're doing that for solopreneurs and small businesses, because there is so much value in your service, really in your service. And um, I would just love to add on that, that whoever has, you know, a, a mindset of, okay, you know, how much will this cost me uh, to, to have a contract or something like that? I always say, hey, how much will it cost you later? How much will it cost oh, yeah. you later? Uh, you know, thinking positive is great and doing visualization is great and, you know, vibrating good is good, but life happens. And when we face the fact that life is 80% hard, really hard, much harder than we would love. Thank you for your confirmation. <laughs> yeah, much harder than we would love, you know, because most of us, we have this perception, you know, life is good and, you know, everything... I mean, life is good, but it's hard. It's a tough parent. You know, it's a really tough parent. It has beautiful moments. There's beauty in everything around us. You know, if we start with the flower to emotion, to music, to relationships, to, to how we feel inside ourselves, there is so much abundance in that. But in the end of the day, 80% of how we live and what we experience each of us on, on different level, no matter what industry, no matter what country, life is hard. So if there are people like yourself who can make this life easier, you know, yeah. it's always better to prevent than to heal later. Oh, very true. That's also my, the motto of my sister who is in, in health industry. Mm -hmm. And she always like saying, I went, I joined the health industry and not the uh, let's say, curing or healing or pharma industry. I want to mm -hmm. help people to get so robust and strong that they just don't get into trouble. Not, yes. Not to, to be healed. Of course, it can happen also. I caught also a very bad cold last week, so I had to also deal with some um, unpleasant days. But as long as we are, we feel responsible for ourselves, it mm -hmm. is not only keep ourselves fit and healthy, but the business is also a part of our life. Mm -hmm. So the same importance or significance that we put on, I don't know, our insurance for the car, for the, for our house, for our health, the business is also a part of this. And one yes. part of the insurance is the legal safeguard because yes. life outside, as you said, it can really be tough when we also don't take over responsibilities. Once we take mm -hmm. over responsibility, look at all these aspects and see how can we fill in such gaps uh, to, to our best knowledge or to our best uh, diligence when we mm -hmm. do this diligence also ourselves or where that we are not expert, trust someone else and invest a little and just have it done. Yes. And then we have, we are already avoiding much worse um, circumstances that we may yeah. face. In and, and there is there is one um, there is one thing that I would love to also love to uh, um, mention here. We all know what are we doing good, and we all know when we don't do something and we should be doing something. So when we know what we need to do, let's for example, okay, uh, it is good that we wake up. I don't know, at six o'clock in the morning so that we can start a fresh and that we have schedule. And so that's good. We know that we should do it. And when we do it, we feel good. We are empowered. We're like, yes, I, that's a great day. Look at me. I wake up early. But it's the same situation that is happening when we know that there are things that we should be doing and we are not doing it. And it's directly influencing our confidence and the power of our heart energy. And that's the really important point that I want to, you know, bring, uh, br bring a message here for. Our heart is projecting electromagnetic field. 
And everything that we do good and everything that we perceive as good, as in a power, as leadership, we are proud. So we're like shining, you know, we, we want to tell the whole world what we did. We're, we become magnetic, literally magnetic. And everyone has a, hey, what's wrong with you? Like, what is it with you? Are you in love? Are you pregnant? Are you this and that? Because we know that we do, that we do on everyday basis those, those little things that are making us stronger. And because of that, this is really important, because of that, our results in building business, in building relationships, and doing successful sale products high level. And now we come to tell everyone, if someone is doing or not doing something that it should be, and you're keeping that to yourself, that is dispowering you more than you can imagine it, it your heart is literally contracted contracted even if it's little small thing that you oh i don't feel good but you know i should but i uh, i will just you know uh, do it next week next week next week and because of maybe one small but important thing the results and performance on meetings on networking on um, a private relationship in health are not there as they should be. So I would really, you know, uh, um, uh, suggest to anyone, whatever you have that you must do, speak it out. Speak it out to the person where you feel safe because the first level of uh, opening this box and, and this powering, this shame that you or someone that someone has inside of yeah. themselves very good word yeah a lot it's, of people have the feeling yeah. it is when we speak it out when we are vulnerable enough to say you know what i mess it up i didn't do this and now i'm scared even that brings vibration of of the heart of the person who did it on the higher level and then comes the next level and then, and then we become free then we literally wow. become free that's very good because now it reminded me of a very nice sentence that you also once mentioned. You said, in order to fix something, first we must realize that it's broken. Am I correct? Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. That was a very nice thing that I, I remember you mentioned in that session. It was very beautiful because a lot of people, they just trying to fix stuff without first admitting or dealing with the fact that there is a fragment or something mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. needs to be changed or, or fixed. Yes. So, and and the uh, first mm -hmm. power comes at that moment that we realize and we accept something is not right. Yes, that we accept. I would add, Avin, that we accept and that we say, you know what? It's okay. I'm human. This is a life. That's process. It's part of my life. Yeah. yeah, it's part of my life. And... Um, if someone feels lonely and say, hey, you know, no one loves me if I say this, there's always someone who loves you. You know, there's always someone who loves you more than any human on this planet. So um, to, to say, hey, I did it. And now I want to see what for. What for is this happening? Not, oh, why? What for? Who will I become? Mm. Because in entrepreneurship, what I really love about, you know, uh, helping other people build their businesses, building my business as well. It's not how much money we earn. We need to know our numbers, but it's not how much money we earn. It's who we become. Exactly. Yeah. That's also a kind of a, a interpretation of the change because yes. also one of my mentors always mentioned a business is about who you are becoming, not who you are. Yes. So it means that one of the main components is that we are open for mm -hmm. change transformation and not to that cuddly version of, as you said, um, we want to stay as we are and we are more comfortable to for that what we really know so that we are also courageous enough and also open enough and vulnerable enough to open up towards yes. changes and see it as, as possibility, maybe as a possibility mm -hmm. to fall or to move on or, or to, to gain. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I mean, we also decide which option are we going to create and who are we becoming. Yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. I mean, who would imagine you, me? I mean, it's so funny. 
the background that we are having also as teachers. Yes. Our days and um, I don't know, you were like into media and I was into also fashion and real estate mm. and banking and um, law and you also had so many, I mean, uh, so... Changes. Uh, yeah. So these are also the indicators of that maybe good or bad, I don't know, well-managed or not super professionally managed. We have also our fragments and failures, but we um, embraced the changes. Yes. So that's what I thought. Um, I, I like this woman very much because she has also similar colorful background like myself, not because I think what I did is the best, but I felt that um, connection And mm -hmm. so I thought, uh -huh. so it is not weird to have a kind of zigzag background. It is actually yes. uh, a, a colorful journey that yes. prepared us maybe also to react to the change in a more positive and open way than mm -hmm. maybe a few years ago or maybe to some other people that they had always a certain um, routine in life mm -hmm. like, I, know, I, i cannot imagine other way around people who are working like 20 years in the same office <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, they, you know there's a there's one thing that is just you know crossing my mind that i i want to also share you never know when you uh when when we learn that it's okay to carry proudly who we were in the past Yeah. That can serve not just uh, uh, not just for us for our realization and awareness of who we are and what we achieved, but also to connect with the people on unbelievable. Short. Let me example. Um, there was a point in my life when I was like you said in media. I went to the casting agency, and the lady was the lady who was supposed to, you know, say yes or no, will I get that role for the television? She was extremely angry, extremely frustrated. She was swearing, yelling, and I'm sitting in the chair. It's just me and her in the office. She didn't ask me, you know, nothing, like even my name. And I'm just listening how she's swearing and how this and that. And and I just said, okay, what is what is that this woman need? What is that this woman need? So I pay attention. She was she was explaining how the people are rude to her today and that her child is ill child is ill and in that period i was being a teacher and i applied for this casting so what did i do i asked her about the child how is she how this happened is she going to kindergarten is it this And what happens? She starts to open up. She sees that someone cares. She's blown away. She's like, you are such a nice lady. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. okay. But, you know, this is the thing. If, if I didn't tell her at that point, even though I was applying for a position for, as an actress there, if I didn't have the background as a teacher then, and if I was not brave enough to share that with her, She would not open up. We would not create great relationship that we still have today after I don't know how many years. Wow. wow. So that is the diamonds that we carry in our past. You never know who you're going to meet on meeting. And maybe, you know, you will say, I'm coming for educational background. And that will be the pleasure point where that investor will connect, say, oh, I have children or I have a kindergarten as well or this and that. So there is a, huge, huge uh, opportunities uh, for the people who have diversity in their uh, uh, background, who have, uh, like like yourself, I mean, did so many things. So that, that those are the diamonds, diamonds for creating network, creating new businesses, supporting other people, uh, That, learning, all, yeah, I mean, so many things. <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. Actually, I'm also happy that you shared that experience also with that uh, lady and the interview. First of all, you facilitated her decision making process. Yes. By just showing that not that you want her to decide or to take the choice um, to take you, but mm -hmm. uh, you helped her just uh, getting to get rid of one of the things that she it was blocking herself, regardless mm -hmm. 
uh, outcome or the result, whether she would have decided to to um, let you join the, the company or the um, media agency, but at least you would have gone out of that interview or that session with a feeling that, huh, at least I helped somebody. Yes. Uh, Getting rid of get rid of swearing or maybe just take better care of the child or something so I think these are the moments that um, have like turning points in everybody's life even yes. if they really realize and also appreciate them yes because another person would have gone mad and say oh what a bad luck uh, this is happening to me I came here for an interview and look at the decision maker so it means it's my bad day or I'm going to fail but you saw it as an opportunity to show also your expertise from another background. Yes. Instead of like hiding that. I remember once as I went to an interview to a um, renowned law firm in Switzerland. It was mm -hmm. after I was graduated. So I started like the interviews, etc. And then I was super open and honest in the interviews. And then we were saying, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? I was responding, I don't know. Because I really didn't know. I still don't know. Mm -hmm. where I, see myself, I see myself somewhere amazing. But I don't know where. Because I'm noticing now since the past few months. Things have changed so drastically. So how can I fix something for myself for five years. That I say in five years I'm doing this. Maybe in five years uh, as you mentioned once. The universe needs me for another mission. So mm -hmm. I don't have to block that. But once a friend of mine told me, I mean, the reason that you're failing in a few, uh, in some of your interviews with very good firms and that um, they are not taking you is that you are mentioning that. Tell them next time when you go. That was so funny. We were drinking some beers and then he just told me, try it once in your life to um, not to be honest or not to be yourself. It was very difficult for me, but I gave it a try. He said, when you go and they ask you, where do you see yourself in five years? Say, I'm seeing myself as a robust, solid partner of this firm, bringing tons of clients and tons of revenue. Partner of a firm that I still didn't know. So I tried it. In another interview, I tried it and they took me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told my friend, they took me. But I feel horrible because I feel committed. To something that I may not keep and I left that firm after six months yes yeah <laughs> so I, I'm thinking I, I told them I'm here in five years being a part of your firm or something and because when they were looking at my CV they were thinking this this woman must be uh, crazy I mean sports and uh, banks and real estate and now law and what is what's, what does she want so mm -hmm. they were seeing that in a way that I don't know what I want, but actually, afterwards I learned it was not a weakness, but mm -hmm. actually a strength to be open for different opportunities. Yes. So once you start seeing it that way, then I think your attitude towards changes and challenges will drastically mm -hmm. change. Yes, so. yes, absolutely. I think that um, values and integrity, you know, and and literally being brave enough to, to speak up and to say something that is completely different, something that people uh, uh, don't, uh, don't expect that someone will say. Because majority of population is in fear, oh, if I really say what I think, you know, they will all look at me like that. Yes, they will all look at you weird. But after yes. that happens, everyone will say, oh, my God, he's so brave. I wish that I say that. And, you know, there will be one person who will say, hey, well done. And um, e even if someone doesn't say, hey, well done, you're going to say to yourself when you come home, you're going to say, hey, you know what? That was the right thing that I did. And this is how I have been in, in my life, all the successful relationship, literally on every continent from real estate world, investment, cryptocurrency. I mean, I really don't yeah, know where I, yeah. I mean, that's something yeah. for me, it's like speaking Chinese. I would go under the table because I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. you know that. And you've been doing, I don't know, yeah. casting and teaching yeah. and uh, yeah. investing and speaking. And yes. also now this. So these are strengths. 
Uh, thank you for that. But my point here is, you know, um, I always say one thing, be kind and work hard. But being authentic is the most attractive, profitable, uh, fastest way to be successful. Literally to be authentic. So if you don't like something, just say, hey, I'm not going to do this. And I was brave enough rebel from my childhood. <laughs> Even with my parents, they would say, you know, you should behave. Now sit down. And I was like, no, I will not sit down. I took the mic and I was singing. And they were like, oh, my God. But, you know, then they accepted <laughs> that. They, they knew that if I feel like I'm doing that, I was a good child. You know, don't, for the one who's watching, I was really, you know, listening to my parents. And they, they did a great job. But when I felt it, that I need to do something that sounds crazy, that sounds, uh, uh, you know, that I just need to listen to my inner feeling, my intuition, I just did it. Yeah. I just did it. And that led to so many amazing things. And to connect it, uh, related to that, um, few, I think yesterday or a few days ago, I wrote a quote exactly thinking about the change that we're having tonight as a topic is i said don't waste your hurt don't oh, yeah. waste your pain use it to serve other people and why i said this let's use this let's use this example with the casting and with that lady who was angry when i approached to that agency that day i literally didn't had nothing to eat I had olive oil in my apartment, no, nothing to cook, no salt, no sugar, nothing, broke totally down. I had olive oil that I drank so that I have energy and I was too proud. This is also important to say. I was too proud and my ego was too big to ask my parents, my friends and to admit, hey, I'm broke. I need help. Mm -hmm. So when I came there, when I came to that agency, Something in me shifted. Something in me said, you know what? She is having di more difficult time than you have. Her child is sick. And you're okay. going to be fine. You're just hungry one day. Mm -hmm. Wow. So in it's that pain. The other yeah. Side of yeah. The in the pain. So whoever is facing anything, compare to yourself. And, and search for the people who are in a bigger pain and help them. Because when I help her, we all know I felt it better. And my life, you know, seems like, you know what? It's good. There's light. There's going to be a way. She smiled. I changed, the, I changed the energy in the room. And, you know, maybe she will not swear on someone later who, who comes there. So it's like the position. Effect. Yes. And then you had definitely also the job and money and i did i i get i get the job yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean so. it is like looking at this um story from both sides like you don't see yourself always as someone who is just going through challenges or problems or something but having the understanding for others and looking at other people's problems and say how can i help them by not actually serving them with my hurts or or wasting my hurts on them honestly yes. at that day as i saw that quote of you i thought you made a typo or a mistake i thought probably she meant don't waste your heart but <laughs> then, now i understand that you were right and you can actually put it both ways yes you shouldn't also waste yes. your heart on other people's or uh, so mm -hmm. that would be like the love and the compassion that you have and on the other hand as you mentioned uh you should not waste your hurt that's yes. also something that can be actually the tool of success, not only for yourself, but for others, but uh, being careful of not wasting it or not mm -hmm. overdoing or overestimating it. That's wonderful. One very nice thing that I remember, because I think now people would even get more interested because you're also a sales expert and also mm -hmm. international speaker. It's, it comes, I think, from our teaching background. What is my mm -hmm. mentor was um, I mean, are you ready <laughs> to go on stage? Do you want to? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm always ready. And he said, I love how you throw yourself <laughs> on stage. <laughs> you just throw yourself <laughs> without thinking a lot or without even getting nervous or something. Then at the beginning, I thought, why is he saying that? I'm not throwing myself on stage. But then I realized he really means that 
what an enthusiasm I'm carrying myself when I'm stepping on the stage and not only stepping, I always run towards the stage. So people sometimes laugh or they do <laughs> say, I just run because I'm in a hurry. I have to go there. And this is, I think, something that we have it also as an asset from that background that for some people maybe, or for some, let's say, stiff um, employers or something, which was a weakness to have different uh, aspects of the background. But I think when we now look back, we speak and we love to share whatever we know. Maybe it's not a big deal, but whatever we are expert at or we are experienced at, we feel the urge and the mission and the obligation not to keep it for ourselves only and share it. And yes. one nice thing that I remember from that session with you, you see, I still have, I'm such a good student. Uh, Thank you. I have everything in mind and I never actually looked at them, but I wrote them down. You said um, by selling something, we are not just earning some money or, you know, exchanging something for money to somebody to earn something, but we are uh, serving them. So that's why yes. it's okay sometimes to be persistent or aggressive even uh, while uh, in, in sales process. So that we should not forget that what we are offering is going to help somebody. So we have to feel like we are persistent and mm -hmm. not giving away so, or not giving up or not feeling like the sheep, you know, just thinking, yes. oh, okay, this month I earned enough money, so I don't have to offer my uh, services or to sell my services to someone, because by not selling them, actually I'm not serving them. Yes, so this yes. Is very much Thank you, Vin, uh, for remembering that. Um, so that means I did a great job, good job there. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad and, uh, that you're mentioning that, so I really deeply appreciate it. Um, sure. The thing is this, if, if we really, if we really, really, but truly, really deep care about what our business is, then we cannot sleep until we remove all the obstacles that someone is like not seeing. Then we are always in a search. How can I communicate better? What is the question? Then it's like when we are in love, when we are in love, yeah. you know, we, we search every possible way. Okay. How can I, what can I do for that person more? What can I do? What, we are paying good attention. What the person is saying, Oh, he loves this or she loves this, or that's her favorite color. Our ears are like this, you know? Yeah. So and our if, eyes. <laughs> yeah. And, and we're like, heart. Oh, we just want to be next to that person. Yeah. So, and it's same in a business. If we truly care about our clients, you know, we are in a coaching industry and consulting, if we truly care about them, then uh, for me, it's pure love or nothing. I'm not a, you know, half, half woman. No, I'm there or I'm not. <laughs> I'm in oh, love completely. That's why I call you that woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I saw the call. That woman. <laughs> and and that, that's the thing, you know, just go all in or don't even start. You know, and, and that's why I think that uh, the, the most of the people, unfortunately, they perceive sales as something uh, with the okay. negative, as the negative tone. Everyone loves to buy. Everyone loves to buy. We all click here and there. We, we you know, we go to the store. Even if someone says, I don't want to, I don't like buying, you know, there is some one thing at least that that person loves to buy. And we all also love to feel good. So if we combine good product with creating a good emotion and then taking care of that client later as well, creating like in a love, a long-term relationship that will even grow more and more. I think that the sales is the best thing that happened ever to humanity. Wow. And really, it, it's... I am in love in sales and I, I love when someone is trying to sell me something and it's not going. I'm waiting, you know, I'm watching the person trying to sell me something and I just yeah, want to stop the world and say, and I just want to say, you know what? Say this, do this and I can help you with that so <laughs> that, that you can sell me. Yeah. But, uh, I was actually yeah. in an event also last week and a few times I really wanted to stand up and go and whisper in his ear and say, if you say this and that and that and more people, 
yes. buy from you. Yeah. And then at the end of the event, I told him, and he was laughing so hard that he said, "You would have made that show super unique and bombastic if you really would have stood up and come to me and yes. say something in my ears, and I would have told that to people, and then we would have made more sales, and it would have been such a fun, unique um, presentation because mm. nobody else." like this in the world no audience stand up and go to the person and say if you say this then it will work actually better or don't give the pause now give the pause later so that yes. people feel this sense of urgency yes and the need it is super important but one thing that i also learned from one of my mentors she, she said uh because once i called her and said you know one potential client literally broke my heart because I wanted so much for her uh, to succeed and that I ha can help her. I even offered her a special package, but she still did not make the decision. And actually, mm -hmm. I'm very sad, not because of the um, money that I could get, but because of the change that she missed. And she said very, a very nice thing. She said once if somebody's saying if, if she, as she said no to you, she actually said no to herself mm -hmm. and to her broader opportunities because mm -hmm. you could have offered her or provided her so much in yes. just a couple of months, but she said no to all those opportunities. So you should, you should actually be sad for her, not for yourself. Mm -hmm. and just uh, hope that one day she will find a way and then maybe she will reach out to you but and pray that she would not pay a high price because of not making mm -hmm. that decision so because mm -hmm. you have a good, I know you like her etc so that was a very nice sentence for me and she said sometimes also in sales process we as you mentioned we have to engage with so much love that even sometimes if people are calling sales pushy, but sometimes we even have to push the people very smoothly or diligently towards making a decision, whether mm -hmm. the decision is buying or not buying. Maybe mm -hmm. that's not buying is actually the better decision for them. That's yes. not a big issue, but she said, how would you react if uh, prior to the wedding of your best friend, uh, while you are now accompanying her or him, towards the bride or towards the groom, suddenly she gets this shaky knees and said, no, 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 I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to. Although you all know as the friends that they are madly in love with each other and it would be one of the greatest marriages in the world, etc., etc. But one of them gets shaky and want to break up the marriage and leave somewhere. So, and she said, what would you do as the best friend? of the groom or the bride, would you encourage him to go for a holiday and get over this? Or as the good friend, you would encourage him or her to move forward and to realize what value is in this life that is awaiting him or her and to help him get rid of that really unnecessary fear and go through the process. Yes. So you would not also encourage him to go to holiday and forget about the, the bride or other way around. But as a good friend, you would encourage them, of course, when you see that um, they are in love and they are your friends or something, you would encourage them to not give up on that love. So mm -hmm. it was that, uh, why are you comparing a sales process with such a romantic thing? She said sales is emotion. Mm -hmm. so, yes, I, I absolutely agree on that. You were mentioning similar, and I'm so happy to, yeah. So there's there's um, there's also one thing because we uh, before we slowly finished because I would oh. I would need I would need to go yes. We planned uh, half an hour. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's there's one thing you know. Sometimes we will meet people. In this case, uh, uh, clients, but uh, I mean prospects uh, who don't become our clients. But if we add enough value, even in the sales process, even in the complimentary call, if so, someone is a coach here, even in a giving, you know, if, if it's a product, some kind of uh, free, uh, uh, free products, uh, templates of something. So I want to say that sometimes people will say no to us 
and they will go to other people who will maybe be cheaper or they are more attracted to that people. And that's fine as well, because I experienced so many times people came to me and then because they were not ready for the level that I was in and for the deep and, you know, deep mindset and business strategy, they were not just not ready. So they said no to themselves. They went somewhere else. And guess what? They came back and they said, you were right. Mm -hmm. You were right. You're the coach for me because you literally tell me what I must hear and there is just sugar coating. And I don't want to brag here about myself in that sense. But my point here is um, I think it's okay from my perspective. I think it's okay when someone wants to leave to let them go at certain point to let them go after yeah. we know that we gave 100% because if we really gave 100% with our full heart and unfortunately not so many people are doing that 100% like maximum and hard the people will be attracted and then bam then you have a client for life because they experience the pleasure of being with you and the pain of being with someone else Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a very beautiful um, takeaway to close also now. So uh, uh, the thing is that we also leave the people who come to us or who also go away from us this freedom of mm -hmm. choice because everybody's then yes. afterwards responsible for the choices they make, like ourselves also. We are also responsible for the choices we make. Either we pay the price or we gain the benefit of them. And one... Um, thing that I also would like to mention at the end is that now that the year is going to an end, we would like also to, to offer something that people do not, uh, sh I don't know, shy away or run away because of a kind of, I don't know, huge investments right at the end of the year, but still mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to us because um, we, I would not like people who are having big potentials or opportunities to run away because they get scared that they have to pay something. Just reach out to us. The year is coming to an end. There's still opportunities to wrap up with uh, satisfactory results and then go with a lighter backpack to the 2019. So do not take your old concerns or issues <laughs> with yourself. See whatever you can get help from us, I can help you with my heart to, to make a robust contracts or legal works for your um, fresh or small business that, that you are still not safeguarded with all those contracts and papers. And I think Sylvia can make magic anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love her magic. That's my favorite word. <laughs> magic. Yes. I mean, thank yeah, you so much it. for, yeah. Most welcome. Thank you for inviting me, and it was pleasure, pleasure pleasure to be here. And now, when we are finished, I will check the comments and 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 you know and see um, whoever is having any struggle, any challenge. If 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 you felt it connected, you know, with me, uh, by any reason, just reach out to me. Uh, like I said in my other post the other day, a great leader is approachable, and this is what I love about you, Avin, as well. But in spite of your great success, you're approachable, you're humble, you're kind, you're adding value to other people as well, inviting guests on your show. So this is what true leader is. So it was really a pleasure to be your guest. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure to have somebody like you to add so much value also to, to our friends and uh, beloved audiences. And uh, looking very much forward to, to repeat this. Also on yes. other topics in the new year. But um Take the opportunity, everyone, and um, you will not. Uh, great leaders are available, but not all the time, right? Just <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Sometimes you also need to act a bit faster to to have the possibility to do it a bit faster and reach them. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a pleasant, uh, blessed evening, and we both wish you. Um, wonderful happy holidays and uh, merry christmas with your friends and family and also a uh, uh, blessed uh, few days remaining of 2018 so still you can make some changes go ahead yes absolutely big hi to everyone bye bye i mean thank you everyone thank you very much sylvia and enjoy your evening